Kedoshim, which comes from the Hebrew word Kadosh. And we know it is holy in our language. But it's more than that. Because what it means is to be set apart. So let's just read the first, the first couple of verses here. Then yod vav hey the Lord spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to all the congregation, every one of them, us, all of us, of the sons of Israel, B'nai Israel, and say to them, You shall be kadosh, holy. For I, yod vav hey the Lord your God, am kadosh, holy. Now, do you really believe for one moment that the creator of the universe would tell us to be holy if we could not be? I don't think so. I do not think so. I think he enables us and empowers us, especially today with his Ruach living in us, to be holy. Because there's a lot more to this than meets the eye. We, not, we may not be in our perfection like he is, but we are declared, he is declaring to us as B'nai Israel, as a covenant people, as a people set apart unto him through the blood of Messiah to be a set apart, a holy, a kadosh people. That's what he's asking us to be, to be like he is. Our Heavenly Father wants us to be like he is. He's our perfect example. Yeshua is our perfect example, the perfect example of holiness. So if we'll focus our eyes on him and what he says for us to do, and we'll live and walk that way, we will be a kadosh, a holy, a set-apart people. And here's the thing. We are set-apart, chosen, set-apart. Through the blood of Messiah, we have entered into the covenant. We have decreed that I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm no longer uh, a sinner. I'm, I'm giving up my way of sin. I was born in sin. I was without hope. And through Messiah, I now have hope. And I'm accepting that blood covering, that sacrifice that it made for me, so that I could be redeemed and brought into the kingdom, so that I could be filled with the Spirit and that I could be made holy to live the way He wants me to live. We are to be separated from the world. I mean, just this week, this letter goes out. When it was mentioned by Sister Tracy earlier. You might want to look at what Rabbi Eric said if you're on Facebook. He gave a very good response. I was very, extremely overly impressed with his response he gave. So you might want to look at it uh, after service today. But, you know, these guys are, are making declarations that's against the law, for one thing. There's no law in standing with what they're trying to do and trying to force the school, public school system throughout the entire nation to do what they want them to do. These are the days and times that we are living in. But we're not to accept that. We're to be a set-apart people. And if it means, if it means, and we should have already done it anyway, but we've, we followed the system in a lot of areas that are errors for a long time. Now, we need to do what we can to try as quickly as we can by the help and grace of God if we're all willing to pay the price to get our children out of the school system. I don't know that it can be changed now. Maybe it can. God can do anything, but we need to do something for our children. Our children are in, the daily, are in daily in jeopardy with what's going on in the public arena. It's not good. If you want them to live for God, it's not a good situation. Let's go to chapter, verse 3. Every one of you shall reverence, revere, reverence his mother and his father. We don't see a lot of this today. We see disrespect for parents, children cussing their parents out, telling their parents no. But God says we're to reverence our parents, respect them, have high regard for them. And you shall keep, and it's interesting, right after he says that, he comes in with this of all the places. And you shall keep my Sabbaths. Children, you reverence your parents and keep my Sabbaths. Oh, well, I tell you, that just really messes with us, don't it? That messes with the modern theology that the Shabbat, the Sabbath, is wherever we want to be. It can be Sunday or Friday or whatever. He says his Sabbaths. And by the way, let's clarify that. It didn't say the Jewish Sabbaths. It says his Sabbaths. He's talking to the whole house of Israel, a mixed multitude, people from the nations, okay? And he says, I am. He's the I am. We sung the song, he is the I am. Hallelujah. I am. Yodei vav the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols or make for yourselves molten gods. I am Yodei vav your Elohim, your God. We may say, well, we don't have idols today. We don't. 
Some of us, our cars are idols. Some of us, our houses are idols. Some of us, are, our, our husband or wife can be our idols. We can be all, anything can be an idol. Anything we put before God, all those things can be fine when they're put in their proper place, in the proper order. But God must be first in everything. Now, when you offer a sacrifice of peace offerings to Yodei Vavhe, the Lord, you shall offer it so that you may be accepted. There was a way when the offerings were given back then, there was a way that they had to be offered, and it was clearly defined in Scripture how they were to go about doing it in order for it to be accepted. What's the point here for, for us today? Because we're not doing the sacrificial peace offerings today. We're doing offerings. We're doing peace offerings by how we give above and beyond and all those things. But we're not killing animals. And there's a way for it to be accepted by doing it God's way. You, they had to do things God's way, the way he declared it to be done. You couldn't go inside, up there to the altar just any way you wanted to. It had to be done according to his protocol. It shall be eaten the same day you offer it and the next day. But what remains until the third day shall be burned with fire. So, it is eat, so if it is eaten at all on the third day, it is an offense. It will not be accepted. So you see, they were given two days to eat it in. The third day, you would have burnt with fire if you didn't eat it all. And if you didn't do it that way and you ate of it anyway, it became an offense between you and God. And it wouldn't be accepted. It's just like it goes all the way back to the beginning with Cain and Abel and the sacrifices. Abel's sacrifice was accepted. Cain didn't do it the right way. And his wasn't accepted, but the creator of the universe said, Cain, why are you so downcast? Why do you look so sad? If you'll do what's right, you'll be accepted also. He gave him an opportunity to do what was right. And what did he do? He decided to kill his brother instead. And everyone who eats it will bear his iniquity, for he has profaned the holy thing, the kadosh thing of yod vav the Lord, and that person shall be cut off from his people. Let's go to Romans and read a few scriptures to keep you placed there. But let's go to Romans chapter 1 for a moment and read a few scriptures to tie this in with it. Romans chapter chapter 1. We'll restart verse 20. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks. But they became futile in their speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God Elohim for an image in the form of corruptible man and of birds and four-footed animals and crawling creatures. Therefore God gave them over in the lust of their hearts to impurity, that their bodies might be dishonored among them. For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature, our creation, rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason God gave him over to degrading passions, for their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. And in the same way also the men abandoned the natural function of the woman and burned in their desire toward one another. Men with men committed indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty for their error. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave him over to a depraved of mind to do those things which are not proper, being filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful. And although they know the ordinance of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death, they not only do the same, but also give hearty approval 
to those who practice them. Listen to the last part of that. They give hearty approval to those who, the word is practice them. They know that it's wrong and they like doing it anyway. And they continue to practice it against the knowledge of God. And they give approval. Now we've got a whole, now we've got a government that's sending down hearty approval of disobedience toward God. Doing things that I cannot believe in my day and my time I'm seeing within our nation. And yet it's happening right before our very eyes. Now, they will reap the consequences of that. They're, God is going to do judgment on, on, these, on these things that are happening in this nation. Now, when you reap the harvest of your land, verse 9, back over in Leviticus, you shall not reap to the very corners of your field, neither shall you gather the gleanings of your harvest. Nor shall you glean your vineyard, nor shall you gather the fallen fruit of your vineyard, and you shall leave them for the needy and for the stranger. I am Yodevafe, the Lord your God, your Elohim. You shall not steal, nor deal falsely, nor lie to one another. And you shall not swear falsely by my name, so as to profane, to profane the name of your Elohim, your God, I am Yodei Vavhe, the Lord your God. There's a lot more to profaning God's name than just saying what we always refer to as GD. A lot more is how we treat each other. If we, this, if we claim to be in covenant with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and we treat each other badly and we lie to each other, we are profaning the very name of the God that we say we serve. There's way more to it. If you don't understand that, you need to understand it today. When you do things that are against the word of God and treat your neighbor badly, you are profaning the name of God. You shall not oppress your neighbor nor rob him. The wages of a hired man are not to remain with you all night until morning. God, does, if, you, if, if you hire somebody and they're working for you and you're supposed to pay them, or when they're finished working that day, ever what the arrangements are, you pay them right then. You don't hold on to that for a little longer period of time so you can gain some extra interest in your bank account. God doesn't look favorably on you when you do those kind of things. You shall not oppress your neighbor nor rob him. The wages of a hired man are not to remain with you all night until morning. You shall not curse a deaf man nor place a stumbling block before the blind. But you shall revere your Elohim. I am Yod Vafe, the Lord. Now let me say this. When we see this, you shall not curse a deaf man, nor place a stumbling block before a blind man. Deaf, can't hear, blind, can't see. We need to take this into the spiritual context too, not just the outward context of how we're treating people. Do we, with our knowledge, that we have more knowledge than someone else? A person can be, can be blind to not understanding things that you understand because you have certain knowledge? Do we take advantage of people because we have that knowledge to get a gain over them? Oh boy, I'm meddling today, ain't I? We got to look at it from that perspective too. Because if our heart's pure and right and that person doesn't know, then he has blindness in part considering what he knows versus what you know. Deafness in part considering what you can hear and what he can't hear. Spiritually and scripturally, today many people are being taken advantage of because they don't hear clearly because the Word of God has been so, so mis, mismanaged and so taught so wrongly for so long, they've been taught the wrong things, so they don't understand, they don't hear clearly. It's our responsibility who know to teach the truth, the whole truth. Because otherwise, we're creating a curse in that person's life, and we're bringing a curse on ourselves because we're doing it. You shall do no injustice in judgment. No injustice in judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor, nor defer to the great. But you are to judge your neighbor fairly. That means that just because a person is poor, that you don't treat him better than a person that's rich. And because a person is rich, because you think you might get something from him, that you don't treat him better than you do the poor person. We're supposed to love everybody and treat everybody alike. Now, the person that's poor may be in need. That's a different story if you're helping that person. That's not, that's not doing, uh, preferring that person over someone because they're poor and in need versus someone who's wealthy. Someone asked me a while back about, you know, me, how do I charge people that are building big homes versus small homes? I said the same way. 
I said, it doesn't make any difference to me. It's the same amount for whether they're poor or they're wealthy. That's the only way I can be fair and be impartial. You know, you have to make a certain amount to be in business. If you're in business, then that's how you should treat everybody, the same way. Amen? Now, you have the right, if at some point in time you want to do something extra special and God lays it on your heart, that's between you and God. You shall, you shall not go about as a slanderer among your people, and you are not to act against the life of your neighbor. I am your Vavhe, the Lord your God. You shall not hate your fellow countrymen in your heart. In your heart. Not just because, oh, I don't do anything bad on the outside, but man, I don't like, I hate that dude. Well, you're not supposed to hate him in your heart. If you've got hate toward your neighbor in your heart, toward someone in your family in your heart, you need to get that right with God today because it's hampering you from getting prayers answered. It's keeping you from getting healing if you need healing. It's keeping you from walking in the blessing of God if you've got anything against anybody that's not right in your heart. It's better to ask forgiveness. Well, if I ask forgiveness, they won't accept it. That's not your problem. You're trying to figure it out in your own flesh. God said to forgive and not to hate. That's not your problem. You do what God said and let God, by his spirit, deal with the rest of it. Amen? Amen. You shall not hate your fellow countrymen in your heart. You, you may surely reprove your neighbor, but you shall not incur sin because of him. The Bible says be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. If someone treats you badly, with, even within the body, you have a right to deal with them and, and, and say, listen, you know, this is not right. You know, we've got the godly way we do things, right? You know, but you deal with it, you, you let it go, you, you move on, and you don't incur sin and let bitterness come in, and you act in a way uh, that you shouldn't act in that will bring further harm to the situation. A soft word turns away, turns away sin, it turns away problems, amen? amen. You shall not take vengeance nor bear any grudge against the sons of your people. But you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am your Vafe, the Lord. Love our neighbor as ourself. Treat our neighbor the way we want to be treated. It seems today it's been twisted around. I'm going to cheat my neighbor before he gets to cheat me. That seems to be what we really see going on a lot of the time, unfortunately. But that's not what the Word says. It says to love your neighbor as yourself the same way that you would want to be treated. You are to keep my statutes. You shall not breed together two kinds of your cattle. And you shall not sow your field with two kinds of seed, nor wear a garment upon you of two kinds of material mixed together. Now, we could get into all kinds of discussion about this, but we don't have time. But the point here is crystal clear. we got all kinds of problems with food today, especially in America. There's a lot of countries that won't even accept our food because it's, so much of it's genetically modified and mixed up. And we wonder why we got all kinds of health problems going on. Uh, they know better. There's countries that need food bad that won't accept our food. Even if we give it to them because it's so messed up, they don't want it in their body. Now, if a man lies carnally with a woman who is a slave acquired for another man, but who has in no way been redeemed nor given her freedom... There shall be punishment. They shall not, however, be put to death because she was not free. That's how they dealt with it in that time. And he shall bring his guilt of offering to Yod Vavhe the Lord to the doorway of the tent of meeting, a ram for a guilt offering. We know Yeshua the Messiah has shed his blood. He's been our sacrifice for all these things. If we do to Shuva, repent and turn to him, he is the sacrifice. And he shall bring his guilt offering to Yod Vavhe the doorway of the tent of meeting. A ram for a guilt offering. The priest shall also make atonement for him with the ram of the guilt offering before Yod Vavhe the Lord for his sin which he has committed and the sin which he has committed shall be forgiven him. And when you enter the land and plant all kinds of trees for food, then you shall count their fruit as forbidden. Three years it shall be forbidden to you. It shall not be eaten. So the first three years that you plant a tree in the land, you're not to eat from it. But in the fourth year, all its fruit shall be kadosh, holy, set apart, and offering a praise to Yodei Vafei the Lord. And even on the fourth year, it's to be set apart. It was to be carried to the temple, to the priest. It was to be set apart. That's how they did it. Can you imagine? You'd have to have a lot of faith, wouldn't you? 
sitting there looking at that fruit for three years and not bothering it, letting it fall to the ground. God's got a reason for everything. He's testing us, and he's going to do something if we obey him. He's going to cause that tree to bear unbelievably from then on if we'll do what he says. Can we trust him enough to do what he says? We just get that little temptation. Well, you know, I really think it'll be all right, you know. God really, look, he, he really, look, you know, he really looks good. You know, he wants us to have it. Who's really talking? God said, don't do it. Satan's the one's telling you to do it. Remember the garden? He said, you can eat from all the trees in there, but this one tree, don't eat from it. In the day that you do, you shall surely die. But in the fourth year, all its fruit, and we'll eat again, shall be holy, an offering of praise to Yodi Vapha. And in the fifth year, you are to eat of its fruit, that its shield may increase for you. I am Yodi Vapha, the Lord your God. A lot of times we just get in too big of a hurry. We can't wait on God long enough to do what he asks us to do so we can really walk in his blessings. We just can't wait. Our flesh, we let our flesh have its way and we end up receiving a curse instead of a blessing. You shall not eat anything with the blood. No blood, nor practice divination or soothsaying. There's still a lot of people today in a lot of countries that still eat the blood. They make food substances out of blood. The life is in the blood. We're not to eat of the blood. You shall not round off the side growth of your beards, your, excuse me, your heads, nor harm the edges of your beard. That can, that's another big discussion that would take hours we could get into about, well, what does that mean? You know, it means a lot of different things in the culture. You know, that was a Canaanite practice. It was pagan practices to cut, and we see it going on today, cut all kinds of emblems in the hair and cut this and that and tattooing and all that kind of stuff. We see our, our culture here becoming more wicked by, we see it, all kinds of stuff we've never seen before with all kinds of things people are doing, tattooing their whole bodies with all kinds of satanic symbols. Some of them even say, well, I'm doing it for God and put all kinds of Bible verses on. Well, you know, God told you not to put tattoos on your body. Not to ta he doesn't want you tattooing his word on your body. He wants his word to be in you. Not on, you understand if it's in you, you don't need to tattoo it on the outside. Okay? You shall not make any cuts in your body for the dead nor make any tattoo marks on yourselves. I am Yodi Vav, hey the Lord. And someone said to me well, uh, one day, well, listen, uh, is it okay for, uh, for me to get my ear pierced? You know, the honest truth of the matter is, they took the guy that was going to be a bond servant to the door, and they put an owl through his ear, pierced his ear, and put a ring on. It doesn't say you can't do that, but it tells you you can't do this. So why don't we just do what God says and I, can't, I, don't, I don't know the answer. Why, did, why does God let it be okay to do some piercing? But it's not okay to do a tattoo? I don't have the answer. Maybe you do. If you do, see me afterwards and tell me, okay? I'd like to know myself. Do not profane your daughter by making her a harlot so that the land may not fall to harlotry and the land become full of lewdness. Our whole land here has become full of harlotry and lewdness. There was a time when I was young, even 50-something, well, it's more than that, 60-something years ago, that it was a shame if a young girl got pregnant. It was frowned upon. It was hidden. Today, it's like it's okay. It's cool. You come to church, synagogue, and it's just all right. Well, I'm going to tell you, it ain't all right. God still says it's wrong. It's, it, you know, if we, and, you know, and we need to... We need to have forgiveness in our heart. Any sin is forgivable if we'll just ask. But the problem is the acceptance. If a person makes a mistake and sins and realizes they sin and they ask God to forgive them, then we need to forgive them. And we need to accept them and love them and help them pass that situation. But to say it's just okay and accept this behavior as common within our body and not deal with the issues, it's wrong for us to do that. Because we allow lawlessness to continue. We allow it to be okay, and everybody starts doing it. And we see, and we see, these, we see a lot of these churches today, these seeker-friendly congregations that grow by leaps, leaps and bounds because it's okay no matter what you do. As long as you put your money in that offering plate, it's okay any way you live. It ain't okay any way you live. I don't care if you don't put anything in the offering plate. That's not my problem. God provides that. I don't. Sin is sin. What I'm concerned about is your relationship with God if it's not right with God and you're not walking in obedience to him the end result in your life if you die in that condition is not going to be good for you 
It's going to be separation from God for all eternity. You shall keep my Sabbaths and, re and revere my sanctuary. I am Yodei Vavhe, the Lord. Do not turn to mediums or spiritists. Do not seek them out to be defiled by them. I am Yodei Vavhe, the Lord your God. We got people claiming to be believers that they can't wait. Well, I don't know about now. I guess now it's the internet. It used to be the paper when I was growing up. Couldn't wait to get the paper so they could read the partner on the Zodiac. Or read what some of the Spirit has said. Or go down the road to somebody's house and give them to tell their fortune. You know, believers. Oh, well, that one down there, you can go to that one because that's a white witch over there. There ain't no white witches. They're all an abomination, okay? Amen. It doesn't matter if you're a witch and you ain't doing it God's way. It's an abomination. You shall raise up or rise up before the gray-headed gray and honor the aged and shall revere your Elohim. I am your Devafe, the Lord. There was a time, too, when gray-headed folks come into your home and all, and young folks, they were, they were trained to be respectful, to rise up, to let, and they come in to show honor and then sit down at the appropriate time. We don't do that. We need to do that. We need to start it back. We need to be training our children to show respect for the people who deserve to be respected. Amen? When a stranger resides with you in your land, you shall not do him wrong. We got people that are from a different land that don't understand our culture. We're supposed to work to try to help them to understand, not take advantage of them and do them wrong. The stranger who resides with you shall be to you as the native among you, and you shall love him as yourself. If you were strangers or aliens in the land of Egypt, or excuse me, for you were strangers and aliens in the land of Egypt. So when, they were, when the Israelites were in Egypt, they were the aliens. They were the strangers when they were in Egypt. I am Yodei Vafa, your Elohim. And he's saying the point is this. Remember how you got treated over there? You're not to do that. See, people of God are not to treat people badly in any way or any respect. We're to do our best to love everybody, whether it's a stranger or whoever it is, to do what we can to help people and to bless them and lead them to Messiah. We can't do that if we're taking advantage of people. You shall do no wrong in judgment, in measurement of weight or capacity. I tell you one thing, you, you want to find out about a person, you want to find out how a person really is, you ever get in a position where you got to deal with their money, you'll find out real quick how they really are. A lot of times that's a real determining factor. You shall have just balances, just weights, a just ephah, and a just hen. I am Yodei Vavhe, the Lord your God, who brought you out from the land of Egypt. You shall thus observe some of my statutes. All of my statutes, all of them. You shall observe all the Jewish statutes. It says my, his. And all my ordinances and do them. I am Yodei Vafa. He wants us to uh, clearly understand he is a holy God. And we don't come to him just any way we want to, disrespectful. We come, we can only, today we come to him through the blood of our Messiah, Yeshua. With respect, with humility, praising and thanking him that he has provided us a way to come before him. That we could get forgiveness of sins. We're to honor his word as we learn his word and to walk according to his word. It's all about him, his ways, and his truth. Then Yodei Vavhe, the Lord, spoke to Moshe, saying, You shall also say to the B'nai Israel or the sons of Israel, any man from the sons of Israel or from the strangers. We can, you know, let's just, let's just do it this way so we can put it in perspective. Instead of using the word stranger, alien, the Gentiles sojourning in Israel. The mixed multitude were Gentiles. They're, they're journeying, sojourning with Israel. Who gives any of his offer, offspring to Moloch shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. You know, we, we had death, a death sentence for a lot. I tell you, a lot of these sins, this homosexual agenda that's being approved by the Supreme Court now, was a death penalty in this country originally. The things that were death penalties from the biblical perspective are now okay. It just... It amazes me. They're now okay. We wonder why our nation is going the way it's going. We have allowed, we have allowed the fox in the hen house. We have allowed the evil one into the place of the house 
And he's corrupting and perverting our children and our nation and our people. God said, I'll stone you stone with stones. He, did, he didn't make no beings about it. I will also set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people because he has given some of his offspring to Moloch so as to defile, as to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy people. What's God saying here is that those who join to the house of Israel from the nations, the Gentiles, who used to practice all these pagan practices, giving their children over to the God of Moloch and the fire of their firstborn, that if they're sojourning with you, they become a part of the house of Israel. You've accepted them and loved them like one of the native, one of the homeborn. That if they do these things, you're to stone them just like you would the native. They, they get the blessings there, and they also get the judgment if they disobey God's word. Because why? We're to be united, one people. If the people of the land, however, should ever disregard that man when he gives any of his offspring to Moloch, so as not to put him to death... This is what God's saying. This is interesting because this is where we're at today in this country. It's where we're going. Things that used to be a death sentence, things that used to have high consequences of judgment, the people, our, 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 our judges and all were supposed to enact and enforce these laws, are not doing it. And this is what he's saying about it to them back then. If the people of the land, however, should ever disregard that man when he gives any of his offspring to Moloch so as not to put him to death, or whatever the penalty would have been. If they don't do what God told him to do, this is what God says. Then I myself will set my face against that man and against his family. And I will cut off from among their people both him and all those who play the harlot after him by playing the harlot after Moloch. What's he saying? All those judges are succumbing to this, going along with it. Whoever's involved with this, they're playing the harlot along with them. The judgment's going to fall on them. They're not getting out of this. They might think, well, well, we better just relax things a little bit. And maybe, you know, you know if, we really, if we really love God, we ought to love all these people. Well, we should love these people to tell them the truth. That there's a way they can get free from their sin and wickedness through repentance. But it's not acceptable for God. If you don't repent, there's going to be a penalty for it if you get involved in this sin. As, the, as for the person who turns to mediums and spirits to play the harlot after them, I will also set my face against that person and will cut him off from among his people. You shall consecrate yourselves. Before I finish reading this, let me just say this. What God is saying is he is saying to us as a people of God that we're to obey him and follow his commandments. And when someone disobeys God within the body, we're to deal with that disobey. This, when they disobey God, we're to deal with that, not to let it ride, and seek that they would repent of their sins, turn to God, and ask for forgiveness, and they'd be healed. But if they reject that, then we're to take what? Another witness and deal with it. And if they reject that, we're to bring them before the whole body. If they reject that and don't repent then, see, God, he, he goes overboard to bring repentance, to give people opportunity and time to repent of their sins. But when we don't even warn them, when we don't do what God says, we're putting hearty approval on those sins and actions by not dealing with them. And then, it, and then, and then so God's saying to the leadership and those people who are responsible for dealing with it, you're not getting by with this. I'm going to judge you too. If you don't judge what, rightly like I told you to, you're going to be judged along with those people who are committing these sins. That's what God's saying to us. I didn't say it. I'm just repeating what he says. Amen. You shall consecrate yourselves, therefore. You shall consecrate yourselves. He's talking to all of us. Therefore, and be kadosh, holy, set apart. For I am your Vafe, the Lord, your God, your Elohim. And you shall keep my statutes, my, 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 my statutes, his statutes, and practice them, and practice them. I am your Vafe, the Lord God, who sanctifies you. He is our sanctification. He puts his spirit in us. He sanctifies us on a day-by-day -day basis as we live our life. If there is anyone who curses his father or his mother, he shall surely be put to death. He has cursed his father or his mother. His blood guiltness is upon him. Man, it was a dangerous thing back then to curse your father and your mother. It was a death penalty. I'll tell you what. That would put, put the fear of God in people. If that kind, of, that kind of penalty was what you got today for disrespecting and cursing your parents. If there's a man who commits adultery 
with another man's wife, one who commits adultery with his friend's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Why today? That's common practice. Well, Rabbi Wayne, that's just in the world. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I wish I could say that was true. That's what the world does. But it's, it, it, it's, it's big within the congregations. The religious community, adultery, is big. You know why? Because it's not dealt with. They're afraid of losing tithes and offerings to pay their payments and whatever other reasons they can come up with. Maybe they're doing it themselves. I don't know. Adultery is adultery. It doesn't matter who does it. Sin, it's sin. And it's an abomination before God. Messiah came to forgive the adulterer. He came to forgive, but we have to re recognize it if we've sinned any of these sins, whether it's homosexuality, whether it's a, a spirit of lying, a, a, a theft, whatever, we need to do re to shove our repentance before God. Recognize that we are sinning and we need forgiveness. Messiah has shed his blood for your forgiveness. But when we don't, and we don't deal with this, and we know this is going on and we don't deal with this, then we become a guilty party to it for allowing it to go on and not dealing with it. <laughs> Now there's more than one person guilty. It's the people who know who's in leadership that's supposed to be dealing with this and not doing anything about it. And what does that do? It corrupts the whole body. It corrupts the whole body. The whole nation's being corrupted because of what's going on. We can't do that within our family here. We cannot allow that corruption to take place for our children and all of us. If there is a man who lies with his father's wife, he has uncovered his father's nakedness. Both of them shall surely be put to death. Their blood guiltness is upon them. Now we know we're not going to be stoning nobody here because we're going to go to jail if we do. The point is, is that God has a way today that we deal with this, and I've been talking about it, is that if this is happening and we know it, we deal with it. Go to that person. If, if you know something about a brother or sister that you've seen, that you happen to see, and God put you in that place, and God allows you to see that, you need to go to them and prayerfully say, look, I know about this, and no one else knows about it, and this is not right, and you know it's not right, and I want to pray with you. If that person accepts that and repents of their sins and turns from their wickedness, that's, all, that's as far as it needs to go. Don't we go into nobody else talking about it. It's Lasan hurrah. Now you're going to get yourself in trouble if you do. But if that person doesn't listen, then you're to bring it to someone else in leadership and let them go with you to pray. We are here for restoration, not for condemnation. If you've already done sin, you're already in condemnation. You don't need no more. You need restoration. But if you refuse restoration after many attempts, there is a, there's a, there's a procedure for removing you from the body until you can. And even then, the, the point in that is, is to remove you. Hopefully, it'll bring shame to you, and you'll repent then and come back. That's the, we always want to leave the door open for people to repent and return when they've fallen away from God. That's what we want to see happen. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 12, if there is a man who lies with his daughter-in-law, both of them shall surely be put to death. They have committed incest and their blood guiltness is upon them. If there is a man who lies with a male as though those who lie with a woman, both of them have committed a detestable act. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood guiltness is upon them. And you can't say that this is just in the Old Testament. We read it from Romans earlier today, remember? We read about this from Romans earlier. God repeats these things in Romans. And in other parts of the scripture in the New Testament. If there is a man who marries a woman and her mother, it is immorality. Both he and they shall be burned with fire, that there may be no immorality in your midst. If there is a man who lies with an animal, he shall surely be put to death. You shall also kill the animal. If there is a woman who approaches any animal to mate with it, you shall kill the woman and the animal. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood guiltness is upon them. If there is a man who takes his sister, who takes his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter, so that he sees her nakedness and she sees his nakedness, it is the disgrace. And they shall be cut off in the sight of the sons of their people. He has uncovered his sister's nakedness, he bears his guilt. If there is a man who lies with a ministrous woman and uncovers her nakedness, he has laid bare her flow, and she has exposed the flow of her blood. Thus, both of them shall be cut off from among their people. You shall also not uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister or of your father's sister. For such a one has made naked his blood relative. They shall bear their guilt. 
If there is a man who lies with his uncle's wife, he has uncovered his uncle's nakedness. They shall bear their sin. They shall die childless. You know, a lot of times when these things have happened, there's a lot of people today who suffering from all kinds of sexual diseases and, and, and issues within their body because of living this way. God has, it's, it's a self-imposed judgment when we live this way and we don't follow God's way of doing things. If there is a man who takes his brother's wife, it is abhorrent. He has uncovered his brother's nakedness. They shall be childless. You are therefore to keep all my statutes and all my ordinances and do them, so that the land to which I am bringing to you, you will live, live in it, and not, it will not spew you out. So it says in 23, Moreover, you shall not follow the customs of the nation which I shall drive out before you, for they did all these things, and therefore I have abhorred them. Hence I have said to you, you are to possess their land, and I myself will give it to you to possess it, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am your Devafe, the Lord your God, who has separated you from the people, separated you, set you apart, made you holy from the rest of the peoples. That's the point in holiness, is to be separated from what the people of the nations are doing, the way they're living. We're not to live that way. They were given the land, and Someone says, well, what about all of us today who are believers in the nations? Well, we're in the nations because we were scattered to the nations, and God's raising up his people within the nations, and the Gentiles are coming to faith within those nations. And when God returns, Messiah returns on that great day, he will gather all his people from the surrounding nations to bring them to Israel. You are, therefore, to make a distinction between the clean animal and the unclean, and between the unclean bird and the clean and you shall not make yourselves detestable by animal or by bird or by anything that creeps on the ground which i have separated for you as unclean thus you are to be holy to me Amen. set apart to me kadosh to me for i yodevavhe the lord your am, am, am holy and i have set you apart from the peoples to be mine we're a peculiar people, ladies and gentlemen. We're set apart from what's going on in the world system. To be a, a nation within nations. As Israel became a nation within the nation of Mitzrayim, and when they became to the point of being full grown, and it was time, and they began to cry out in their slavery that they were in, God came and delivered them out. We are a people within nations, many nations, that we're seeing all this stuff begin to take place. We're seeing all this mess. France alone, I understand the other day, is now 60% Muslim. 60% Muslim. They don't believe in the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that we believe in. Allah is not the same God. Their rock is not our rock, ladies and gentlemen. It's the same thing with a lot of the other false religions of the world. The point is, is that the religions of this world and Satan is really pushing hard to come against the people of God. It's not going to get easier. I'd like to sit here and tell you it's going to be easier. What I'm telling you is you need to buckle up. You need to tie your shoelaces tight, and you need to believe and trust God like you never have before. And if you've been doing some playing around, you need to quit playing around and get ready because judgment is coming upon this world. It has to happen to release the sons and daughters of God so Messiah can return for them. Just like it did in the land of Egypt. God will do judgment. And then he will take his people out to take them over to the promised land. You know, Israel could have went right into the promised land if they hadn't got involved in the disobedience with the golden calf and all that. That's another teaching all by itself. Now, a man or a woman who is a medium or spiritist shall surely be put to death. They shall be stoned with stones. Their blood guiltness is upon them. There's actually a couple of... Uh, half to our readings that would be good I'm on I think I'll actually read both they're not that long let's turn to Ezekiel as we're preparing to get started Ezekiel chapter 22 we actually uh, let's see here yeah. 22 and verse 1 Ezekiel 22 and verse 1 we'll start with verse 1 
Then the word of Yodavah, the Lord, came to me, saying, And you, son of man, will, will you judge? Will you judge the bloody city? Then cause her to know all her abominations. He's talking about Jerusalem. He was sent out the prophet because Jerusalem had turned away from God, just like America's turning away from God. And you shall say, Thus says Adonai, Elohim, the Lord God, a city shedding blood in her midst, so that her time will come. So that her time will come, and that makes idols contrary to her interest for defilement. You have become guilty by the blood which you have shed, and defiled by your idols which you have made. Thus you have brought your day near, and have come to your years. Thus you have brought your day near, and have come to your years. What does that mean? It means that God gives us a long time, a chance to re repent, to return back. He understands the timeline. He knows how far he allows a nation or a people to go and give them time to repent. And when they don't repent, judgment becomes imminent on that nation. He'll use another nation to judge them. That may be a wicked nation too, but not as wicked. That's how he does it. Therefore I have made you a reproach to the nations and a mock unto all the lands. When a nation that was a godly nation turns away from God and begins to be like the rest of the nations, and they flaunt their self in God's face, who had set them to be a set-apart people, he brings judgment. And they become literally a mock to the other nations. Look at America today. It was a great, powerful nation. And, and there's very little respect among the world leaders for this nation now. Those who are near and those who are far from you will mock you. You of ill repute, full of turmoil. Behold, the rulers of Israel, each according to his power, have been in you for the purpose of shedding blood. They have treated father and mother lightly within you. The stranger, the alien, or the Gentile, they have oppressed, they have oppressed in your you've been oppressed in your midst. The fatherless and the widow, they have wronged, been wronged in you. You have despised my holy things and profaned my Sabbaths. This was in the, in the land of Israel itself, in Jerusalem. They were acting this way. Slanderous men have been in you for the purpose of shedding blood, and in you they have eaten at the mountain shrines. In your midst they have committed acts of lewdness. They had already set up their high places within the land, and they were up there practicing their immorality and their idolatry. In you they have uncovered their father's nakedness. In you they have humbled her who was unclean in her ministerial impurity. And one has committed abomination with his neighbor's wife, and another has lewdly defiled his daughter-in-law. And another in you has humbled his sister, his father's daughter. In you they have taken bribes to shed blood. You have taken interest and profits, and you have injured your neighbors for gain by oppression. And you have forgotten me, declares Yodei Vavhe, the Lord. When we take advantage of the poor, with all these payday loan things and stuff, in the banks and stuff that's going to get you because you can't get a loan nowhere else to get you to come in here and sign your title over, charge you, goodness, 100% or so interest a year if you added it all up. Are we really helping those people? Oh, we're helping them. Nobody else will give them. Are, are we really helping them? No. We're, we're putting further misery into place for these people. That's not the kind of help that they need. They need counseling and teaching and, and uh, how to deal and with their finances. And, and you know, These people are, are they're in a bad way. They need training. Behold, then I smite my hand at your dishonest gain, which you have acquired, and at the bloodshed which is among you. But those people get wealthy off of those people, and they think it's going to be okay, but it's not. Can your heart endure, or can your hands be strong in the days that I deal with you? I, Yod Evav, the Lord, have spoken and shall act. And I shall scatter you among the nations, and I shall disperse you through the lands. And I shall consume your uncleanness from you. And you will profane yourself in the sight of the nations. And you will know that I am Yod Evav, the Lord. And the word of Yod Evav, the Lord, came to me, saying... Son of man, the house of Israel has become dross to me. All of them are bronze and tin and iron and lead in the furnace. They are dross of silver. Instead of silver, they are dross. Full of impurity, sin. Let's turn over to Amos. 
Amos chapter 9. Amos 9, and we'll start with verse 7. Give me just a moment to get there. Amos 9, verse 7. Are you not as the sons of Ethiopia to me, O sons of Israel, declares Yodavafe the Lord? Have I not brought up Israel from the land of Egypt, from the land of bondage and slavery, and the, and the Philistines from Kephthor and the Armenians from Kerr? Behold, the eyes of Yodavafe the Lord your God are on the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from the face of the earth. Nevertheless, I will not totally destroy the house of Jacob, the house of Israel, declares Yodavafe the Lord. For behold, I am commanding, and I will shake the house of Israel among all nations, as a grain is shaken in a sieve, but not a kernel will fall to the ground. All the sinners of my people will die by the sword. Those who say the calamity will not overtake or confront us. The false prophets are screaming today, oh, it's going to be great. Everything's going to be wonderful. Nothing's going to happen to us here in America. When God gets ready to come, he's just going to rapture all of us out. We're not going to have to see any pain or suffering. Well, I hope they're true and I'm all wrong. That would be wonderful. I would love to be saying I, I was wrong while I'm standing up there talking to everybody and I get to miss out on all this judgment that's coming upon the face of the earth and upon America. Because they're saying it's not going to happen. We're just going to have revival. We can have revival. I'm all for revival. I want us to have revival. But there's going to be judgment in the midst of revival. That's what I believe. I believe there's going to be judgment in the midst of revival. So we'll see what happens. We'll have to wait. But the point is, is God is going to deal. He has to deal with murder of millions and millions of babies. The blood is crying out from the ground. He always has. He would have to apologize to Solomon Gomorrah if he didn't deal with all the stuff that's going on in the world. It's not just America. It's the whole world's in this situation. There's stuff going on in Israel that shouldn't be going on in Israel today. And he just got through saying all the sinners, he says, of my people. He's talking to his people, Israel. He's talking to you and I. If we're sinning and we don't repent and do Teshuvah, he says we're going to end up dying by the sword. There is a judgment to those who sin and don't repent, don't turn back to God. God is going to clean the house. Judgment begins where? At the house of God first. He has to get his people purified and cleansed before he can judge the rest of the world. In verse 11, in that day I will raise up the fallen booth or tabernacle of David and wall up its breaches. This is talking about the end time when all this stuff is taking place. The restoration of the fallen tabernacle of David. And I will rebuild it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom. And all the nations who are called by my name, declares Jehovah, the Lord who does this. Behold, days are coming, declares Yodavafe, the Lord, when the plowman will overtake the reaper, and a treader of grapes him who sows seed, when the mountains will drip sweet wine and the hills will be dissolved. Also, I will restore the captivity of my people Israel. Restoration. And they will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them. They will also plant vineyards and drink their wine and make gardens and eat their fruit. I will also plant them on their land, and they will not again be rooted out from their land which I have given them, says Yodavav, the Lord God. That's literally in the process. has been taking place for a, while, for a long while right now, but it's not by any means finished because there's going to have to be some dealing with sin. If you read and study the scripture, you'll see that he's, he brings them back to the land. He brings them back to the land in the condition from the nations that they're in. Not all of them are right, and he deals with them there. So let's go over to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 33 is where we will start. 
33 through 37. Again, you have heard that the ancients were told, you shall not make false vows, but shall fulfill your vows to Yodavah, the Lord. But I say to you, make no oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is the footstool of his feet, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you make an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your statement be yes, yes, or no, no, and anything beyond these is of evil. Be careful how you enter in to covenants. Make sure that you're able to carry them out. God will hold you accountable. Verse 5 and 43. Chapter 5, verse 43. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, in order that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax gatherers do the same? And if you greet your brothers... Only what do you do more than the others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? And he ends it up quoting Leviticus. We just read. Therefore you are to be, your translation may say perfect, but it literally comes as a quote from Leviticus. Kadosh. Therefore you are to be Kadosh, holy, set apart. As your heavenly Father is holy, set apart. You know, as we go through Matthew here, there's places that, it's been said. If you read the whole thing, it's been said. A lot of these it's been said actually comes from which had not been written down and codified at the time, but it was in process what was referred to as the oral Torah from the Mishnah and all. It was formed later on into the Talmud. Is that they said certain things because the, these, these Jewish people didn't love their neighbor, their Gentile neighbors, like they loved the Jewish people. They made a big difference. And we know that from the story with Peter and how Peter was looking at it at that time and God dealt with Peter about the sheets coming down, how he was not to call anyone unholy because God had come and died for everybody so that all could be holy. Let's go to 1 Peter and let's end up with this. 1 Peter chapter 1. So as we're turning there, I guess I forgot to say it all, is that some of these things here that he's dealing with, it's been said, it was said by these guys as traditions of men and not what God really meant because God has always meant for us to love our neighbor as ourself. It's right there in the, in the commandments. And he's straightening the mess out. 13, 1, 1 Peter 1, verse 13. Therefore, gird your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Yeshua the Messiah. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lust, which were yours in your ignorance. We've all been there, haven't we? Former things that were sinful, harmful, that would bring a curse to us or our family if we lived in them. But God, in our ignorance, he's delivered us from those things. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior. Our behavior is to be set apart. It's to be the same behavior of our Messiah. Because it is written, and Peter even quotes it, you shall be kadosh, holy. For I am Kadosh, I am holy. God wants us to be a holy people, a set apart people. I don't care what religion is teaching today, that there's somehow this new covenant we're under grace, and we can live any way we want to live if we just believe that Jesus or Yeshua is the Messiah and everything's okay. No, it's not okay. It's not okay to say you believe and live opposite to what you're really saying. You cannot believe Yeshua in, is really the Messiah. And act differently. You cannot go against his commandments and claim to know him. John says, if you say you love me and you don't keep my commandments, you're a liar and the truth's not in you. We cannot 
say we believe in God, we believe in our Redeemer, and live opposite that. It is time for the synagogues, the churches, to return to holiness, to righteousness, and purity among us, so that the world, when they see us, will see clearly that we are different. We're not living. We don't participate in the garbage they're participating in. We can, we, can, we can be around these people, work with them, be kind to them, but we don't have to participate in the garbage that's going on. We need, they need us. God, we need to be an example. We need to live right before God for their sakes, so that they can be redeemed, so that they can know there's really a hope in this world. Let's pray. Abba, Father, we bless your name and we praise your name and we thank you that you are a holy God and that you want us to be just like you. And Father, we thank you that you have sent Yeshua, our Redeemer, to redeem us, to save us from our sins. And then to fill us with your spirit, Father, to empower us, Father, to live that life, Father. And that you've got, since your mercy is, and your grace, so when we do fall short, that, Father, there's forgiveness of sins and empowered by your spirit to move forward from that moment on and to live for your glory and to honor you and to praise you. I pray that your blessings be upon every person here today, Father. I pray if there's anyone here today that doesn't know you as their Redeemer, as their Savior, that today is the day of salvation, that they will turn your heart to you today to seek your face. Father, I pray that you meet every need today spiritually, every need emotionally. And if there's anyone sick, that Father, today you would touch their bodies and they would be healed. And that you'd meet every single financial need that people have, Father. That, Father, we would realize we're to be a holy, a set-apart people for the building up of your kingdom here on earth till Messiah returns. And we give you glory and honor and praise and thanksgiving in Yeshua's name. Amen. I have seen you in the sanctuary. Now nothing else could ever satisfy. Better than mine.